Hey guys, welcome back. Uh, this is going to be part three of the Micromax build. I'm just going to be wrapping it up, doing the wiring for the fuselage, to get a little harness in here to attach to the wing. I'm going to talk about a battery, receiver placement, and then uh, programming the the radio and CG and all those things to get it ready to fly. So I'm going to start with the uh, wiring here. I need to trim up these leads and solder on a connector which comes with the kit. So this little part here is going to be in the wing and then this part is going to be in the, in the fuselage I imagine. So we'll get started with that. Um, the kit came with these two pigtails and I assume these are for the fuselage side of the harness. Pretty heavy gauge wire and I'm going to switch over to some lighter gauge wire because it'll bend easier um, if I have to like stuff the wire into the fuselage so I'm just going to make up my own. I'm not going to use these so let's start with um, trimming these wires and soldering up the wing. All right, I'm gonna try to tin up these uh, leads. I've I've trimmed the wire back and and stripped the uh, the coating off. I'm just gonna put some uh, flux or soldering paste on the ends here. This is gonna be a very tricky thing to try to solder up. Solder, solder. Every time I say solder, someone comments and says I'm saying it wrong. But oh well, don't care. Alright, now I gotta figure out this guy. So I'm gonna put some some of this flux on the ends here, and I gotta figure out a way to hold this somehow, which is not going to be easy. I do have one of these alligator clip things which I rarely use, I don't really like it too much, but let's try it in this in this case so I want to try to maybe I'll just go across like that I want to try to kind of get these wires attached on the inside edges, let me tin this first Um, I guess I'll do the signal wires first. I don't know how. And I got the camera basically over my head, so it's. It's uh, kind of annoying. Thank you. 
There's one signal wire. Might not be the best for those who are uh, not really confident in their soldering abilities. It's a little tricky. Maybe if you're building one of these and you don't want to do this step, uh, maybe ask if you have a friend that uh, could help you out. Okay, there's two signal wires, and then I have to combine the two um, negative leads and the two positive leads. So that might be even trickier. Let's see how we how we manage here The cord on my soldering iron is quite uh, rigid and it uh, kind of makes it awkward to manipulate the iron. Okay, I got one negative tacked down. Let's see if I can kind of push this. Give myself some room here. Okay, that wasn't terrible. A lot of exposed wire though. I'm gonna have to uh, make sure that that's all covered up somehow. I don't wanna short anything and the wing is obviously carbon so 
It's conductive. Okay, just one left, and probably be the hardest one, because I'm stretching it all the way from the other side. I think we can manage. Somehow I pulled that off. Again, we're gonna have to look at protecting the wires. I can zoom in on this. See, I have a lot of exposed wire, so I'm gonna uh, think about how I can protect those, maybe with some uh, silicone or something. Okay, I put some uh, black rubberized CA around all the wires on both sides, and uh, that should uh, protect the wires. Um, so now I need to kind of shove this guy in the wing and probably glue it in place somehow. Okay, moving on, I have uh, opened up this slot in the fuselage for the other side of the connector here and I just used a Dremel with a one millimeter grinding bit and this file and I have also um, scuffed up this connector this is the fuselage side connector and it fits in here pretty well so I'm happy with that um, and then I put this connector onto the wing connector so I stuffed the wing connector back in and um, put this connector on and assembled the wing on the fuselage and everything fits so that's great so what I'm gonna do now is uh, solder on the leads for this guy and if you remember um, I wasn't gonna use these that came with the kit I was going to use my own wire but all I have to do actually is just use the ends I cut off the XO8s in the wing. Um, so, less work for me. I will be putting my receiver right here. So, um, I'm, I don't need to run wires to the nose. If you're putting your receiver in the nose, you need longer wires to get to this region here. So keep that in mind. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and solder up this connector. Um, I'll just do that off camera because it's much easier than the one that was in the wing. Alright, uh, I soldered up the fuselage side of the harness. As you can see here. Pretty straightforward. And I have uh, also scuffed up this connector and sanded it a little bit. Because I'm going, we're going to be bonding this into the fuselage, so I uh, scraped it with an X-Acto knife and sanded it with some coarse sandpaper. And now one thing I'm going to do is, um, so the connector and the wing is going to be glued in as well, and the fuselage side is going to be glued in here. So what I'm going to do is I have some, just some uh, mold release wax. I'm going to take a Q-tip. And I'm going to get some wax on the Q-tip. And I'm just going to wax up this area here around the hole for the connector. Very 
generously and just in case it oozes just kind of get it all over so I'm gonna put a couple coats of this on here and I will also do the wing I don't want to glue the wing to the fuselage Okay, that looks pretty good to me. So now obviously we might have some of that mold release wax uh, in the area we want to bond glue to. So I'm just going to take a file and just refile those areas. And that should get rid of that wax for us. In case any manage to sweep in there. Okay. And I will do kind of a similar thing on the wing because the wing's going to get glue as well. Okay. Okay, um I actually resoldered the, these wires because that black CA that I used, although it looked good initially, um after it was cured for a couple hours, it got really brittle, brittle. It was supposed to be rubberized CA. Maybe you're not supposed to use it with accelerator, I don't know, but it, it started just kind of flaking off. And uh actually I just used my fingertip and it all flaked off real clean, so I just unsoldered all these. And I ended up using some some little pieces of shrink wrap uh, instead of that black CA. So just keep that in mind. That's what the back of it looks like there, just with a little bit of shrink wrap. 15 minute epoxy with a little bit of cabosil. And I've already put some on this connector a little in here, I'm going to put a little bit more. Probably doesn't need a whole lot. Got to work somewhat fast with this. I just realized I forgot to do something I 
get my wax out again. And I'm going to put some on top of the connector here. I don't want to glue the connectors together. Okay. Back to the epoxy and it's already going somewhat thick on me. I'll just splooge some into the wing here. These wires are going to become basically a part of the wing, unfortunately. Okay, I'm going to clean up All right now the tricky part Got to try to connect these I'm going to push this one Into the fuselage side slightly Try to hold it in place. And put the two sides together. I just want to see that they're fully seated together. There we go. Kind of held that in place with that file. Pull that out. And then basically just got to jam it all together like that and I'm gonna run the wing bolts in Okay, now we'll just cross our fingers and hope that all came out okay. I'm going to let that dry for at least an hour or so. And then we'll take a look at it, see what we got. Okay, I actually let this dry overnight, so let's see if we have a result here. Take the wing bolts out. Hopefully I haven't glued my wing to the fuselage. Somewhat of a result. That guy looks good in there. A little bit of cleanup to do.
take some of the epoxy out of there. I'll do that later. And then on this side, well, she's definitely glued in, but uh, this plastic piece sort of lifted up. But okay, I can push that right back down. So maybe I'll just put some CA on that or something. Yeah, pretty happy with that. Again, a little bit of cleanup, but since we waxed this up, it should all come off nice and easy. So I'll go ahead and clean this up. Um, well, basically the build is done, so I'm doing the battery and receiver installation and all that. The fuselage is very compact, so obviously things get pretty tight. Let me just see... Let me just show you what I have going on here. Um, I have my receiver right here in this space, and it's a JR uh, RG612 soft case, and I took the soft case off and put some shrink wrap on it. And it was snug, but it fits in here. Um, a lot of you guys, if you're flying something else like FR Sky or Radio Master or something like that, you'll pro you're probably going to be able to get something that's a little more compact than this. And obviously you want a really slim receiver. I am putting my battery up front here. This is a uh, 2S lithium ion 300 milliamp pack. I actually made this pack myself. I might put a link to the cells. I got them on eBay. Um, I really wanted to use a high voltage or you know something uh, more than uh, 7 volts. I didn't want to use a single cell lipo like bubblegum stick pack, which I've seen guys use. Uh, so if you're going to use a single cell, you might want to consider moving the tray back a little further. You'd run the single cell battery in here and some kind of slim receiver alongside of it. But again, I wanted to use this. This is about the same size as one AA battery, and it fits in here pretty well, so I'm happy with that. Uh, I made two of these packs up. So if I'm out flying um, and the battery gets low, I can just pull the pack out and pop another one in. Okay, so with the receiver being here, I am taking up some of this uh, space. This is supposed to be the ballast compartment, but I think I can still figure something out here for ballast. Uh, I don't know if I'll get to that in this video. I might. I'm thinking about 3D printing a little box that I could glue in here or place in here and um, put a few slugs of ballast in there. So basically, um, I've bound this to my to my radio and I was gonna start doing some basic programming. Um, so I gotta do that. I gotta get the CG set up and I gotta figure something out with the antennas. The nose is 2.4 friendly and I have one antenna on the bottom here and I gotta do something with the second one. I don't wanna just have it like uh, parallel to the one in the nose, so I gotta figure this out somehow. And unfortunately I have these JR antennas which have this aluminum sleeve, so it makes it kinda harder to set up, but I might put it like something like this. But we'll see. Okay, I'm just gonna crack on with this. I'll get something done, I don't know what, and then uh, I'll show you my progress. Alright, I've uh, done a lot of the programming, and I'm gonna do um the uh, lead for the CG so um, I printed out some of the settings and uh, the, they say the CG is 64 millimeters on the leading edge and it, it's only going to take about 15 grams of lead to get that CG so I have about 15 grams right in this cup and uh, what I'm going to do what I'm going to try to do is actually melt this down and pour it into this little tin foil aluminum foil uh, mold I made from the nose. I just put the aluminum foil over the nose and scrunched it down. Kind of, I can kind of show you. Just like this. It's not exact, but it should get me uh, pretty close. So I'm going to melt this lead and pour it in here and hopefully that will allow me to get all the weight uh, really, uh, really uh, far forward in the nose and give me more room for the uh, battery and everything else. So I'm going to go do that right now.
All right, let's see how this turned out. Should have a little nugget of lead in the shape of a nose. Some of the foil stuck to it, but it's fine by me. Don't really care. Kind of peels off anyway. A few little wrinkles I might have to uh, file out, but let's see if we can get this thing in. Yeah, it fits pretty good. Might work on it a little bit. Let's see if there's still room for the battery. Yep. Okay, let me work on that a little bit, and then we'll come back. Okay, we're on the CG machine here, and if I let this settle, we're at uh, 64.7, 64.5, something like that. I'll, I'll call that good. I'm happy with that. And the overall weight, so ready to fly, is 245 grams, so we're under 250, so that's nice. Um... I'm going to do a few more little things inside the uh, nose cone here to get everything situated and then I'll show you what my programming is like. I put a little bit of uh, foam between the battery and the lead. So I just shoved, I was going to glue the lead in there but everything is real tight so I don't think I need to glue it. I just put it in there, put some foam in, put the battery in. Battery fits well. Um, turning the model on and off just with an extension lead. Uh, I was thinking about using a Zepsis Nano, which I might do in the future, but this is going to be okay for now. And I just have this balance balance lead that kind of has to hide in here somewhere. And we should still be able to get the, uh, the nose on like that. And we are actually powered on. So I printed out the, uh, the recommended settings. I'll just go over them real quick on the ailerons. They want up 11 millimeters, down 13. That's a little bit of a reverse differential, but we'll try it. Elevator plus minus uh, 5 millimeters, rudder plus minus 4 millimeters. Snap flap 1.5 to 3 millimeters. And then we have some flight mode speed half a millimeter up on the ailerons, which is really hard to measure. Um, mine's probably somewhere between a half and a millimeter. Cruise is zero, and they have a slow cruise at the two millimeters down ailerons, thermal four millimeters down ailerons, and air brakes or flaps full down negative 26 millimeters, and trim your elevator for each flight mode. And we already talked about the CG, it's set at 64 millimeters. So let me show you what I got. Have a uh, Regular cruise mode here. Got the recommended throws and the ailerons. And then I have uh, the two millimeters of camber. And then I have some reflex for the speed. And then I also have the four millimeters of camber on a slider. If I want to use that, and I have full flap down. On the tails, I got the recommended settings. I got five millimeters up, five millimeters down, four in the rudders. So everything's working in the right direction. I got some elevator compensation with the flaps when I pull the flap stick down. The elevators move down. So, we're basically ready to rock. I got to uh, find a, a nice day with some uh, mild wind to fly this thing and find a nice location. Maybe we'll go to the same spot as the Dragonfly. So hopefully I can just tag some uh, Maiden Flight video to the end of this video. So uh, cross your fingers and let's see what happens. Nice wind. What is this one? 
Micromax. Micromax. Maiden flight. Sure you got the camera going? You got it going. 